Hi devs. You know, whether you're an ardent practitioner of TDD, test-driven development, or you just need to make sure that your code is operating as expected, testing is certainly a part of all of our lives. In today's video, we're going to step through testing a Hill application using vTest and the React testing libraries. Let's get started. To follow along, go to the testing section of our website, hilla.dev. So we're going to do our testing in a Node.js environment. So first you're going to want to run the following command from the command line within your project. Uh, this is an npm install. As you see, we have hyphen d, which is going to save our packages under dev dependencies in our package.json. We also have vtest, which is our testing framework itself. Uh, we have the browser plugin to allow and facilitate browser functionality. Uh, we have WebDriver IO, which is a custom implementation of Selenium W3C WebDriver. Uh, we have the pretty format, which is going to make our Java object, JavaScript objects look nice and pretty. So once we have our Maven project going, the first thing you want to do is to set up your configuration file. So in the root of your project, we see we're setting up a configuration file here. We're going to just talk through it briefly. Uh, first of all, we're importing our type, use config fn from Vite. Uh, this is going to actually import the type that we need from Vite itself, um, used for type checking. Uh, we're going to also import this generated function here, override bot and config, uh, from our locally generated file. Then we actually deal with the actual custom configurations. Um, you see we're defining a variable here, custom config, which is going to be a constant for our actual Vite user configuration function. Uh, taking env as a parameter, which is our environment settings. Um, inside, you see it's returning an object. So we have our plugins array, which is simply an empty array to hold any Vite plugins. We're not going to use any in this case, but we could add some, and you can look those up in documentation. Um, the test you see there is being an object that's actually specifying the configuration for testing itself. Uh, we are setting our global mode for testing as true, and the browser is going to set our specific settings for browser-based tests. Now, we want to be able to run this from our command line. So within your package.json, we'll simply add these lines right here at the top where you see where we're adding the script so that when we run test, it will actually run the vtest. So now we need something to test. In today's case, we're going to be testing a React functional component, so let's get started. First, we'll do some imports. So we're going to import our button, text field, and text field value changed event, all from the Hilla React Components library. Now let's look at the actual component itself, the React component, that is. So we're going to test three different aspects. We're going to test that the component is rendering properly. We're going to test our user interactions. And we'll also test that the component is calling the backend service as we expect it to. So for this case, it's going to be the form of which we expect in the standard to-do list or CRUD app. So what we're going to check for the rendering will be this H2 that the my to dos is displaying as we expect. So we have an H2 of my to dos Within this div here, we see our text field, which would be the blank where the user would actually input their text, whatever their to-do list item is. And we're going to interact with that by use of this button that we imported earlier. And so once we click on the button, we're going to call the to-do service we just mentioned and call specifically the add to-do method, which will add that new to-do. We're also going to call these two methods here, set to-dos and set new to-dos, which are going to affect our state properly and allow us to map those down to this unordered list down here. So now let's get to testing. The syntax you see here is vtest. Uh, vtest is the Vite native framework for testing. Vite, of course, is the React and Vue.js development framework developed by the same person who gave us Vue.js, Evan Yu. Starting at line seven, we have our describe block. The describe block is actually going to define the test suite for this to-do view React component, which means all the tests are going to fall within this block. Next, you see mention of this spy here, which you might have also caught in our earlier import in line one. A spy is a special kind of function you'll find very often in unit testing. And what it does is it both records the way that it's called, as well as any arguments that's passed into it. You'll find it not only in vtest, but other testing frameworks like Jasmine, as well as Jest. As you see here next, we're going to use before each and after each. Before each and after each blocks contain code that needs to be run either immediately before each test or after each test is complete. So in the case of R before each, you see it contains code that references our spy on method, which creates a spy, so to speak, that we mentioned of earlier, on the add to do method of our to do service. This is going to be really useful when it comes to checking if that method is actually getting called during the tests without actually executing the method itself. Next, you see the add to do spy on mock return value, and that's setting the spy to return a resolved promise. Finally, in our after each block, we're going to restore the original implementation of the add to do method to make sure the spy doesn't affect any other tests. All right, we've done our setting up. Now let's get into the actual tests. 
Beginning on what is now line 21, we're going to have three parts to our first test. We have the if statement, which is actually going to define our specific tests. Then we have our render, which is going to actually use a rendering utility to render that portion that's being called, that portion of the component, within the testing environment itself. And then we have our expect. That's our assertion. This is what we're expecting to happen. And in this case, we're checking that an element with the text, my to-dos, is being presented within that rendering output. Okay, hopefully that made sense to you. Let's get on to the next test. Beginning at what is now line 27. I'm moving these around a little bit. Sorry about that. But now line 27, we're going to test our user interaction. We start with the same syntax as earlier with it. And then we're going to should add a to do is what we're expecting to do. Now, just for clarity purposes, and you probably know this already, that string is only a message for us, the tester. The computer itself has absolutely no idea what should add a to do means. That's just a message for us about what's going on in this test. You can call it a label if you will. Next, we're going to do our simulation of the actual user interaction. So first things first, we render our to-do view component, which is not going to render it in the browser, but it's going to render it in the virtual DOM for testing purposes only. Next, we're going to define text field, which is going to go out and it's going to find the text input field in the render component by its label, new to-do. And we have that over in our React component. Similarly, when we say await user event, we're going to click on that text field. That is going to actually simulate the clicking of a user on the text field itself. And we're going to actually simulate the user typing read testing guide by this line right here. User event type text field read testing guide. That will simulate those words or those strings being typed into the text field itself. Next, we need to find our button because we want to click this. So the line const button screen get by text add to do. So that's the name of our button is add to do. That will find that button. And then we'll simulate clicking it by the next line, await user event, click on the button. So let's move on to the last line of our coding block here, our assertion. One thing I like about this testing library is that it's fairly intuitive for the most part. As you're reading each word out loud, you're literally describing what's happening in the test. So here, beginning on line 37, what we expect, our assertion is, when we grab screen, which is an object provided to us by the testing library, it's a virtual simulation of the browser. So on that object, we can run this method, get by text, which is going to simply grab the element that has the text we passed in. In this case, the text we're passing in is read testing guide, which is what we simulated typing in the text field up here. And then we're going to make sure that it exists. So this two here, this is really just syntactic sugar. It's used for what's called chaining purposes to chain our expect with the exist. And our exist is referred to as a matcher here. So we're simply making sure, is there an element that has this string of text. All right, let's move on to our last test. In this case, beginning on line 41, you'll notice much of the syntax is a lot like the last test. So here we are checking our call to our backend service, so should call a service when adding to do. And we're going to render our to do view just as before. We'll grab all of our necessary elements just as before. We'll simulate typing in the string read testing guide. We'll also simulate clicking on the button that has the text of add to do. Now you remember from earlier, when we define our button, that it not only adds the to do to the to do list, but it also makes this call to the backend service right here. And that's what we want to check. So looking at our assertion in line 51, what we expect is that when we employ our spy, and we define our add to do spy up here, it is an instance of our spy instance, and specifically one that is going to record the calling on the method add to do as well as any arguments passed. And so we're saying, hey, when we employ that spy, does it, when you look at this matcher, is that true? And so our matcher is to have been called with. Looks a little obscure, but it's literally what it means. Was that method called? And specifically called with that argument. Now you may be familiar with other matchers from other frameworks like to be or to be equal or to be greater than. So this one is simply to have been called with and it will verify that we called this method to find the add to do spy with this argument here, read testing guide. So now we've written our React component. We've also written three tests to test that component, both in terms of what's being rendered, user interaction, and a call to the back end. Let's run our tests. First, since this application is a Hill application, it's going to rely on some generated files. We'll go ahead and generate those files first. We'll do that with this command from the root of our project, Maven clean compile. Hilla generate. Excellent. Again, this is a Hilla application. Hilla is an awesome web framework developed by Vaden, 
that provides you with a Spring Boot back end packaged together with a TypeScript front end and a single project. There's a ton of benefits to doing it this way, and there's other videos on this channel you can reference to get started with Hilla. To run our tests, and let me just clear this a little bit, we'll simply run npm test. What's going to happen is Vt, or the Vtest, is going to open up a GUI for us to view the running of the tests. All right, so we got some errors. That does happen sometimes. Let's go ahead and run our Maven build right now. Fantastic. So we'll cancel that at this point, and then we'll now run npm test. Let me just clear this so you can see what's going on. npm test. As you see, vtest gets called. When we run vtest, it's going to open up its own GUI and let us see each test either getting passed or failed. In this case, all three of our tests passed. We can open it up here for more details. We see our three pass that it should render what we wanted it to render, that it should add it to do, and it should call our backend service all work successfully. So that's a quick overview of unit testing using vtest. Be sure to check out the description box below. We'll have some links for you for vtest documentation, React library documentation, and for sure, hilla.dev that you see pictured here, which is an exciting Java-based framework to help get your web application going a little faster and a little more smooth. Thanks for watching.